Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Chris Abbott, but all my friends just call me Abbo. And in this video, we're going to be breaking down for you a church growth strategy that a friend of mine has been using post-COVID to reach tons of people. Now, he's been doing this for about 13 months, and literally in the last 13 months, his church of 60 people has had over 200 new families that have planned a visit to his church. So in this video, we're going to walk you through exactly what he did so that you can do it at your church. So let's dive into how a church of 60 got 200 plan your visits after after COVID coming up. Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, we are constantly putting out new videos every single day, five days a week, helping you with church leadership, social media, church growth, and reaching more people for Jesus. So in this video, this is going to be pretty simple. Basically, what I want to do is just kind of break down what my friend Doug did at his church in order to reach a bunch of new people and grow his church post-pandemic. Right, so this is a question I get a lot of people say, okay, I know that social media worked before COVID and people were able to you know, get more people to their in-person services, right? But what's working now? Is any of this stuff working after COVID? So Pastor Doug has been using this strategy for the last 13 months and his church of 60 people has had over 200 new plan year visits and all of it has happened after COVID. So let's dive in. Now, Pastor Doug knew that the world right now is craving authenticity. Right? So one of the biggest problems that a lot of churches make is they go all in on a digital invite strategy. But the problem with that is that you're literally coming to someone and, you're, and your very first interaction, you're asking them for something. Right? So if you go up to someone on the street and say, hey man, do you want to come to church on Sunday? Right? Your very first interaction is transactional. You're asking them to do something for you. Now, obviously, we know that we have the life-changing message of Jesus. We want to get them to church so that they can get saved, get baptized, plugged into a small group and a serve team, and absolutely change their entire life. And we've seen that happen over and over and over again. But it doesn't change the fact that in their mind, this first interaction is a transaction, and it's you asking them to do something for you. Right? So what happens is most churches invite people to church so they can do ministry. Right? And this seems to make sense. It's like, okay, well, if we can get them in the front door, right, man, then we can you know, share the gospel with them. We can get them baptized, saved, plugged into a small group, plugged into a serve team. But the problem is we're asking them to do something for us. So what we need to do is instead of inviting people to church so that we can do ministry, we actually need to flip that. Right? This is exactly what Jesus did. Right, He did ministry first, and then we can invite him to church. So instead of inviting people to church so you can do ministry, you need to flip that, do ministry first, and then invite people to church. And so that's exactly what Pastor Doug did. The first thing that he did is he actually created a Facebook ad and targeted everyone within driving distance of his church, which in his town was about 12 miles. And he just simply used a picture of him and his wife, just kind of a laid back picture uh, with him and his wife. We didn't want him to look like he was, uh, you know, preaching on Sunday morning or like he was in like a suit and tie. You want to make sure that you are approachable and that you're wearing something like a t-shirt or you're on date night. Even like a selfie video is a great one because it just shows that you don't take yourself too seriously. And then he created a Facebook ad that just simply said, how can I pray for you this week? Right? So what happens is, right, he flipped it. Instead of just saying, hey, do you want to come to church this Sunday? He actually started with ministry. So he's actually starting by building relationship equity and he's starting by doing something for them. Right? It's a completely different interaction that very first time. So instead of inviting them to church, he just said, hey, how can I pray for you this week? Right now he has the chance to give ministry away and actually do something for the other person in their very first interaction. This builds trust, it builds relationship equity, and it builds leadership equity. The next thing that he did is he created a Facebook ad and instead of sending people from the Facebook ad to his website, he actually sent people from the Facebook ad straight into Facebook Messenger. The reason you would wanna do this is because Facebook Messenger is a great place to have an authentic conversation. And remember, the world is craving authenticity right now, right? Like, man, people are are smart they understand when you're just trying to get something from them or if you have an ulterior motive right so if you just come in and just say how can I pray for you and then you take it into Facebook Messenger where you can have an authentic one-on-one -on -one ministry conversation that's a game changer right and again we're building that relationship equity we're building that trust and we're letting people know that man, we don't want anything from them we just want to pray for them now because he had a lot of people who were responding what he did is actually used a chat bot to be able to collect a lot of the prayer requests and then after having that interaction 
interaction and that conversation, then it led to an invite to church. And for anyone that wanted to, it gave them the option to actually plan a visit. And the cool thing about using chatbots is you can actually assign a tag so that not only will it tag every single person that plans a visit, but it'll actually send that information to you as well. So every single time someone submitted a prayer request, Pastor Doug got a notification on his phone. And then every single time someone went on to plan a visit, he got another notification with their name, email, and phone number, letting him know that they had scheduled an appointment to visit church this Sunday. All right, and then this next part is my favorite. So we've actually helped a lot of churches like Pastor Doug do this. And this is the single most important part, right? What Pastor Doug did is he then sent an audio prayer to every single prayer request. Right now, why would he do that? Well, if you think about it, this is just kind of like a one-on-one -on -one anonymous conversation, right? Like they don't know you, you don't know them. You're having this conversation. They trust you enough to reach out and submit a prayer request and let you know what's going on, right? But they still didn't know Doug and Doug didn't know them. But what happens is when all of a sudden they get an audio prayer and they hear Pastor Doug's voice using their name praying for their situation, right? What happens is we call it conversation elevation. It elevates that conversation from an online anonymous conversation to a personal connection. Now they feel like they know Doug. They feel like he's in their corner, right? It's like, oh, that's an actual real person, right? So it's going to elevate that conversation from an online anonymous interaction to a personal connection. Okay. So before I get to my last couple of points, uh, I want to know, have you ever tried anything like this? Have you tried Facebook ads or chat bots? If so, let me know down in the comments below. And if you have any questions about this strategy specifically, let me know in the comments. I'll read every single one and answer any questions you guys have. Okay. So the audio prayer should basically contain three different things. First thing is an introduction. The second one is the prayer itself. And the third one is a question, right? So what Pastor Doug would do is he would reach out, he would introduce himself, then he'd pray for him, and then he would end it with a question. So it might sound something like this. Uh, hey, John, what's going on? This is Pastor Doug. Hey, I got your prayer request. Man, I just wanted to reach out and pray for you personally. Uh, so let's pray. All right, dear God, I thank you for John and for his wife, Susie, and her upcoming surgery next week. Got to pray for the doctors who will be performing the surgery, right? Go through the prayer in Jesus' name, amen, and then end it with a question. So you'd say, hey, John, I tell you what, we're actually having church this Sunday at 10 o'clock. Can you make it? All right, end of audio. Now, it's really important to end with a question and to not say anything else. The last thing that you say should be a question mark. And Doug did this flawlessly. So because he continued to pray for people and send an audio prayer to every single prayer request, he ended up building a personal relationship with thousands of people. So in 13 months, he personally prayed for over 1,800 people, sent over 1,800 audio prayers, and invited 1,800 people to church. And you know what happened? Over 200 of them ended up planning a visit. Let me ask you this. Do you think if you went out into your city and you prayed for 1,800 people and then invited them to church, do you think some of them might actually say yes? Well, that's exactly what happened with Doug. Over 1,800 audio prayers and over 200 plan your visits to his church in only 13 months, right? Completely transformed everything. Then he has fresh faces and a steady stream of new visitors almost every single Sunday and incredible stories of life change. Now, it's important to note that not every single person that you pray for is actually going to show up, right? He had over 1,800 prayer requests and over 200 plan your visits. That's about an 11% conversion rate. Right? And he knew that going in, right? That was kind of one of the things that we talked about as he was getting ready to launch this strategy is when you're doing ministry, it's going to be messy. You're going to pray for a lot of people and most of them aren't going to show up to your church right away, right? But you are going to put a rock in their shoe for some of those people. You're going to plant a seed. Now, some of them will come right away, right? And again, he had over 200, but some of those people end up waiting a couple of weeks, a couple of months. I guarantee there's some of them that he may have prayed for a year ago who are going to show up in the next couple of weeks. That's just kind of the way it works. As you continue to plant the seed, eventually you start to walk in the harvest of the seeds that you've been planting. All right, so why did this work? Well, this worked for one simple reason. It's because this isn't marketing, this is ministry. Right now, we use a platform that we have. We're good stewards of the resources that we have. Pastor Doug used the resources that he had, the platforms that he have. He used Facebook and technology, but he used it to do ministry first, right? So instead of an invite strategy where he just put out a bunch of marketing, inviting people to church, instead he did ministry first. And because he did ministry, the overflow of praying for over 1,800 people is that some people are going to come to church. So I'd like to invite you to try this strategy at your church. All right, so I hope that you found this video valuable. Again, we kind of walked you through exactly what Pastor Doug did at his church and kind of what that looked like. And again, this is a strategy that's working right now post COVID. Uh, but if you need some help kind of setting this up, or if you want to learn a little bit more about it, just head on over to churchgrowthagency.com. We would be happy to jump on a call with you and talk about what it would be like for us to set this system up for your church. 
Hope you're having a phenomenal day. We'll see you soon.